Battlefield 2042 has no single player campaign, just like a previous title, 2142. But there's a background story that is in some ways connected to Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. And in my opinion, it would be an astonishing single player campaign. However, DICE and EA didn't think so. Nevertheless, M107 is here and I want to walk you through a story that shaped the Battlefield 2042's world. A story that you might not need to know of for playing 2042, but is definitely a beautiful one to hear. So sit back, get a cup of coffee, and enjoy the story of Battlefield 2042. There's the year 2030, where climate changes are harassing the life on Earth. Sandstorms, hurricanes, and heavy rains are blowing chaos into an already unstable world. The effects of these climate changes soon caused many governments to collapse, leaving only the United States of America and Russian Federation as the world's superpowers. As a result of the collapse of many governments, especially in the Europe and Asia, borders are no longer a thing. More than 1.2 billion people got displaced, lost families, and were compelled to leave their homes, assumingly forever. Some of these people were destined to die trying to do so, but some survived. Hopeless of getting help from the governments that were still intact, the survivors formed a colony of people who were unbound by their nations. They called themselves the non-patriated, known to the world as the Nopads. By the year 2037, the advancements in technology made it easier for the remaining governments to heal and recover. They wanted to open their borders and start taking in people that were once displaced. They wanted to take Nopads as refugees. However, Nopads could not trust them since they were left to die seven years ago when they were desperate for help the help that never came. So they refused the offer since they knew what it's like to survive and live without being a part of a specific border or nation. Now they wanted their own identity, unbound, needless of a government, and independent, a recipe for disaster. Soon they formed their armed forces with ranks and levels, just like a real military. They had specialists trained harder and more specifically for missions that were beyond a normal soldier. Soon the Nopats had something to say against the superpowers. In the year 2040, a space debris storm caused a malfunction in the global satellite network. It caused the satellites to crash, destroy each other, and plunge the world into darkness. A darkness which was caused by the disappearance of communications on Earth. Radio signals and satellite signals were no longer a thing, just a blink of an eye. The storm destroyed more than 70% of the world's satellite network. This event is known as the blackout. It wasn't just a blackout, the remains of the satellites came back on Earth, crashing down on people who had no idea what was going on. The chaos it caused was overwhelming and it caused a chain of events that led to the war in 2042. The remaining superpowers, US and Russia, blamed each other for the blackout, a catastrophe that compelled the governments to start proxy wars to secure food, medicine and supply lines. Both nations were hiring NOPAD forces for the job so they could deny any responsibility if things went south. By 2042, the world was shifting towards an all-out war. The chaos was taking over. Nothing mattered but survival. The inevitable war started the same year. But how? What caused the two superpowers to actually go against each other? Or better say, who caused the war? To answer that question, we need to know how the Nopads gained so much power and it all started somewhere in South Africa, in the Richtersveld. A small village somewhere in the desert of South Africa in the year 2003. A boy, Luizo Okusania, was born. His father, Themba, was a well-known and respected man in the region. Almost everyone trusted him in the Richter's Belt. In the meantime, an American company called the Wellspring secured the rights of mining in the entire South Africa. It didn't take more than a decade for the South African people to find out that Wellspring mining caused devastating ecological problems for the African people. Luizo didn't know that his father Themba knew about this disaster all along. Disappointed, young Luizo wanted his father to stop the mining machines all over the country using his power and influence, only to find out that his father was working on building another wellspring facility somewhere else in the country. Shocked and in despair, Luizo became an outcast. He was a confident public speaker and he started to make a reputation for himself. Such reputation soon put him on the radar of Noah Wolf. Wolf was the leader of a revolutionary group in South Africa that were trying to destabilize the already corrupted government and take on power, arguably to save the country. In 2033, Wolf enlisted Luizo in a weapons and training program to get him ready for the missions ahead. Now Luizo was getting ready to follow Wolf into the battle. Just like his father Themba, Wolf was also hiding a secret, a worse one. 
Wolf was a CIA agent trying to overthrow the current African government to further the American influence in the region. When Luizo found out about the truth, he knew he had to do something, so he did. He wiped out the entire squad that Wolf assigned for the mission, and he went radio silent. It was then when Luizo became the most wanted man alive by the US government. Now he needed a nickname, Oz. While Oz was hiding, he was actively watching the notepad movement grow into something bigger. Who felt fitter to lead them? Who was confident and ambitious enough to do so? But the notepads were bigger than his own town or his country. It was way bigger. A global fight for justice. Oz had a vision for the future of the notepads. One that they could be in power. With his influence growing day by day, hunters started to look for him almost everywhere in the world, and Wolf was only one of them. However, Oz survived. He went back to Richtersveld to undo the damage that Wellspring caused. He started to do everything in his power to rebuild a once destroyed homeland. He established the first Nopad nation, the Namaka land. Nopads now had a future, a future to fight for. Irish, on the other hand, has a crossover with Oz. Irish met a woman called Rafaela who was working for Oz. The relationship between Irish and Rafaela soon turned into a romantic one. A few months later, Rafaela was pregnant with his child and Irish was discharged from the Marines. When the blackout struck, Rafaela was in a hospital for a routine check. As a result of the blackouts, a commercial jet went straight into the hospital. Hundreds of people died and Rafaela was one. Irish was in despair, desperate for a way to heal his wounds. He adopted an orphan called Omar. His parents died in the hospital incident, just like the love of his life. Irish was assigned as the captain of a ship full of notepad refugees called the Exodus by Oz. In one of Oz's top secret missions, he sends Irish and some of his best men to retrieve a briefcase, a briefcase that holds info on another top secret mission, the US government. Irish retrieves the briefcase, but only after shooting Clayton Pack Pakowski, Pack, a member of Tombstone Squad, his former squad in the US military. Pack was still working for the US. Injured, Pack was taken back to Exodus by Irish. Pack called him a traitor and told Irish about what Oz wanted to do with that information. He wanted to start a war between the superpowers. The info of that briefcase was nothing more than the coordinates. Rao was on the Exodus with Irish as well. Being the information and tech guy, Rao informs Irish of a threat. A threat that Oz was about to take advantage of. An experimental orbital weapon called the Shearwater 1 was about to crash down on Earth. The US government knew the exact coordinates of the crash and wanted to retrieve their secrets. The same coordinates were in that briefcase. Knowing that, Irish did not want to give it to Oz. After all, Pack was right, but it was too late. Three condors full of Oz's men were inbound to the Exodus. A deadly battle took place. Oz wanted that case even if it meant killing his own captain, Irish. One of Oz's men takes Omar hostage. Irish, desperate to save his son, handed over the briefcase, but Oz wanted to kill them all anyways. A gun placed on Omar's head. A gunshot was heard. Pack shot the hostage taker and saved Omar. Irish takes Omar to safety, but the one remaining condor shot Pack and ended his life. One last sacrifice for the loyal US soldier who always loved Irish as a bigger brother. The briefcase was safe, but it didn't mean anything since the hostage taker had sent the info to Oz right before Pack shot him. The coordinates mentioned Doha, Qatar, and that was where Irish was headed to stop what Oz was planning to do. He put together a fire team of Boris, Falk and Pike with himself being the squad leader and went straight to Doha, where Oz was trying to bait the Russian forces. After battling through Russian forces, Irish's squad got there first. The US forces were on their way to the coordinates and there was no time to retrieve any intel, so Irish ordered Boris to destroy the satellite. Irish contacted the US forces to call off the attack, but it was too late. Moments later, an airstrike hit the Russian forces and killed the whole platoon. Irish and his squad luckily survived and joined an American assault as they engaged Russian forces. This fight is known as the Doha Incident and is believed to be a starting point for the war in 2042 between the two superpowers. Simple as that, just like any other war in human history, one man's ambitions were enough to sign the death sentence of millions of people. That's how the war began. Now, no patch needed to choose a side. The very people who wanted their own identity must choose to fight under a flag. Many chose the US and some chose Russia. The flags may be different, but the methods were the same. No pads were being used to wage war on another country. Chaos and upheaval continued to exist for decades up until 2142. That's how one man was enough to put the world on fire.
Hope you enjoy.